All right. So uh, we have completed second John. Uh, so now we will look at the third letter of John. Now, this third letter of John is written to a person named Gaius, uh, G-A-I-U-S. And uh, it basically touches upon three things. Um, it praises Gaius for some good thing which he has done. And then it criticizes another person named Diotrephes for something bad that he has done. And there is a request made regarding a person named Demetrius. So these are just the basic three things that are dealt with in this particular letter. Uh, so to begin with, um, if we could have someone read out for us uh, was the first four verses uh, of uh, third John. If someone could read out for us the first four verses of uh, the third epistle. Third John, uh, the first four verses, please. <clears throat> to the beloved Gaius, who I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I received, I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Amen. Thank you. I really appreciate your reading. Uh, yeah, you know, because... Um... It helps me when someone reads. Um, yeah. So he, uh, in this third letter as well, uh, you have John just simply addressing himself as elder. Uh, he doesn't use his uh, uh, bigger title of apostle, just simply refers to himself as an elder. And uh, uh, so he is writing to Gaius, uh, whom again he says, I love in the truth, just like he did in the previous letter, is emphasizing the fact that all that they are doing, all that they feel for each other, all that they are accomplishing, it's all in the truth of Jesus Christ. Uh, so now who is this Gaius? Uh, there are basically two um, persons bearing this name uh, in the New Testament. The first one would be in Acts chapter 19, 29, and also Acts 20, verse 4. So in these two chapters, 19 and 20, this is the name of a person who was uh, Paul's traveling companion. Uh, he was from the region of Galatia, from a place called Derby, and uh, his name was Gaius. So this could be uh, Paul's traveling companion who is being referred to over here. Mm, on the other hand, it could also be someone else was mentioned in 1 Corinthians 1.14. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 1.14, uh, when Paul goes to Corinth, he stays in the home of a uh, person named Gaius. And in fact, he's the only person whom he personally baptizes in Corinth. Uh, so it may be referring to that person. And then again, it may be referring to just about somebody else named Gaius. Okay, But as far as we know, there are two Gaiuses mentioned in the New Testament, one in Acts and one in 1 Corinthians. So it could be one of those two persons, or it could be somebody else altogether. So the uh, we have no knowledge regarding that. But one thing we get to know about this man, Gaius, what an amazing compliment is given to him by John. It says in verse 2, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Basically, what John is saying over here is that, you know, let your external health and all the things in your life may be as good as your internal health. 
So this man's internal health, his spiritual health must have been in excellent condition. So he's, John is saying, you know, may your external health and may all the things in your life go as well as your internal life is going. And when I was just reading this yesterday, you know, in the night and I was meditating on the scriptures, the thought that came to me is, can someone give me a compliment like this? You know, because for most Christians, if you were to give them this kind, this as a, as, you know, speak this particular sentence as a blessing over them, you know, and if you were to say to them, you know, let your external health be as good as your internal health, goodness knows what condition they would be in. Because you see, for many Christians, their internal condition, their spiritual condition is so bad, it is so pathetic that if their external health was the same as their internal health, they would probably be in a hospital ward, you know, connected to IV tubes. So uh, over here, for John to so confidently say, may your, um, may the rest of your life and may your, your health be as good as the way your soul is doing on the inside, what a compliment that is. Here is a man who is walking in God, who is, you know, uh, renewing his mind on a daily basis, who is strengthening himself in his inner man, a person like this, uh, because he is so healthy on the inside, John is able to say to him, may your external health be as grand as, as your internal health is. What a great compliment. So it's something that maybe we all need to ask ourselves. In what condition is my internal spiritual health? Can someone actually say this to me? Can they say to me, say to me, may your external health be as good as your internal health? So, you know, we kind of need to ask ourselves, what condition are we in? Now, this man, why was his internal health, his spiritual health that great? It is because he was faithful to the truth is what we get to know in verse 3. John says, people have been testifying about how faithful you are to the truth, he says. And they've been telling John how this man is continuing to walk in the truth. And so he says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. You know, so uh, he refers to Caius as my ch uh, children. So maybe, you know, he, uh, John had been mentoring him and, you know, uh, uh, speaking the scriptures to him. So he is so happy now to see this Gaius having grown up so well in the faith and he's walking in the truth. Not only is he just, you know, uh, listening to the truth, it says continue to walk in it is what he says. He's, uh, people have been telling him how Gaius is continuing to walk in this truth, which means on a daily basis is applying it. So it actually basically comes down to that. If you and I want to have a really great internal health, spiritual health, we should be people who are not just listening to the truth, which is easy enough to do. You know, you just need to stay awake and keep your ears open and you'll be able to hear the truth. But are we practicing it? Are we literally walking in it? Are we applying it? Because then our internal health is going to be really good. So uh, here is a man who was actually doing that. And uh, he was walking in the truth to the extent of showing kindness to strangers, which is what we find out in verses 5, 6, 7, 8. So you know, if someone could read out for us, most probably it will be Collins who will be doing that for us. Um, Verses five, six, seven, and eight. Um, you know, if uh, you could read out for us, please. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers, who has borne witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well, because. They went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Amen. 
Amen. So in the earlier uh, letter, we saw John very strictly warning the believers and telling them, do not take people into your home who are false teachers. Now here it's the exact opposite. He's saying those who are true teachers of the word, those who are true missionaries of the gospel, please welcome them into your home. So he is so glad that Gaius is doing this. OK, so he says, dear friend, you are faithful in what you are doing for the, for the, for the brethren. He says, even though they are strangers to you, you have been willing to take them into your home. And so he's so glad that Gaius has done this. And he says, uh, you know, these people whom you took into your home and, you know, and you, you gave them hospitality while they were doing their ministry, uh, they have told the church about your love. So when they came back, they told all of us about the love that you showed, you know, the, the way you treated them. And so uh, John is so happy about it. And um, uh, he, he says, you know, uh, when these people come to you, he says, please send them on their way in a manner that honors God. So because basically you see from here, uh, from Gaia's home, they'll be now be going to another town. And over there, uh, uh, again, they would be sharing the gospel. Uh, so they... What does he mean by when he says, send them in a manner that honors God? Maybe he's referring to the fact that, you know, when they move on to the next place, they may not have finances. So maybe he would need to give them a contribution when they are leaving, you know, so that they will have enough in their hands to, you know, travel to the next place um, and, you know, stay somewhere till they can find a home which will be willing to, you know, take them in. Um, or, or maybe he's also saying, send a letter of recommendation you know, with them, because this is basically how it operated in those days. So if you want to go and stay in a place, a lodging house is not going to be safe. So what you would do is you would take a letter of recommendation from someone that you know over here, you know, and they know somebody in that other town. So you take a letter from this person to that person over there and you give them that letter. So that person would read the letter and say, OK, fine. You know, someone that I am that I know is recommending this person. So maybe this person is somebody um, acceptable. So then they would be willing to take you into their home and shelter you for a period of time. So um, uh, John is probably referring to something like that. So he, when he says, send them on their way in a manner that honors God, he's probably saying, you know, Put something in their hands. Put some money in their hands. So that you know when they when they're going to the next place, uh, they they will you know their needs will be taken care of. Also, if they need a letter of recommendation and you know someone that you can recommend uh, recommend them to, then you know please send a letter along with them so that they, when they go over there, they'll have some shelter you know in somebody's home. Uh, so um, um, John is very pleased with what Gaius is doing. Uh, because he says, you see these people, these missionaries who are going from place to place, they are doing it for the sake of the name. You know, the name that has been rejected by these false teachers, you know, because these false teachers have corrupted the name of Christ. They are not uh, teaching the true Christ. They are teaching an anti-Christ. They are teaching false Christs. Uh, so uh, these people... They, have, they are traveling from place to place, you know, uh, and living among strangers for the sake of the name. And obviously, they're not receiving any help from the pagans, you know, is what he says in verse 7. So it's basically us believers who should be helping because who else will they turn to? And then he says, we ought therefore to show hospitality to such people so that we may work together for the truth. So when we you know, show hus hospitality to such people. It's like as if along with them, we are doing the, min the ministry work which they are doing. So um, I may not be an apostle or a teacher, you know, going from place to place, uh, preaching the word and sharing the gospel. But at least I can open my home, you know, and I can maybe shelter them. I can provide them with a bed. I can provide them with food. And when I do that, I'm actually participating in the Great Commission. I'm actually fulfilling the Great Commission, you know, because because I opened my door. Now the Great Commission is getting fulfilled in my town. So what I am doing by just showing hospitality is almost as great as preaching and teaching. You see, 
um, so uh, while those people who are traveling from you know uh, place to place are actually speaking out the words because they have been given that gifting to you know explain the scriptures this guy is who maybe has no ability to teach and preach just by opening his doors he's participating in the great commission and and bringing about its fulfillment so imagine the reward that he would receive in heaven he would receive a reward equal to the teachers and the preachers you know because he was he fully participated in the great commission and did his part by giving hospitality to those people so john is very pleased regarding these things and then we also get to know why he is so pleased with gaius conduct because we get to know another aspect of this whole story in the next few verses um so um if we could have uh, you know one of us read out verses 9 10 11 9 10 11 and 12 which opens up the next part of the story to us I will write to the church I wrote to the church but Diotrephes who loves to have the preeminence among them does not receive us therefore if I come I will call to mind his deeds which he does parting against us with malicious words and not content with that he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to putting them out of church beloved do not imitate what is evil but what is good he who da, he who does good is of god but he who does evil has not seen god demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself and we also bear witness and you know that our testimony is true amen thank you so here we get to know that this is person named diotrephes uh, who um, seems to have some kind of an important position in the church uh, so here john is saying i wrote to the church but diotrephes who loves to be first will not welcome us so it looks as though john has sent a letter of recommendation to diotrephes you know saying please accommodate these these missionaries whom i'm sending you know open up your doors to them you know welcome them shelter them so that they can do their work but this diotrephes was not willing to welcome them he rejected the recommendation letter which was sent why because he loves to be first uh, maybe he regarded these traveling preachers and you know missionaries as competition because maybe he liked being prominent in that church and having an important position in the church and how everyone looks up to him and admires his teachings and all of that and now here you have outsiders coming in and they know when they start preaching and teaching then uh, the congregation receives new truths from them and they are happy to you know to to learn more and he doesn't want to share the glory he wants it all for himself so it looks like he's a man um, a very narrow minded person who uh, loves being praised who loves being popular and he doesn't want to share his personal glory with others so when these missionaries come over there uh, you know sent by god to minister he does not want them to come in so what does he do this man um uh it is uh, in verse 10 this is what john says about this man he says so when i come i will call attention to what he is doing spreading malicious nonsense about us not satisfied with that he even refuses to welcome other believers he also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church so this man he seems to be an important person so when someone tries to entertain these missionaries who are coming he you know threatens them and says I'll, i'll have you excommunicated from the church if you entertain these missionaries so he's gone to that extent and um, plus he's spreading he's spreading uh, malicious wrong uh, information regarding john and the others so uh, 
he and he's doing all of this because he loves to be prominent you see for him self promotion has become so important that he's willing to go to the extent of throwing out people who are willing to entertain the missionaries so actually when gaius took the step of taking people into his home he did it at a great risk he actually ran the risk of being thrown out by diotrephes from the church which basically indicates that diotrephes must have had the support of the majority of the other members because if he was on his own he would not have been able to excommunicate people which means everyone held him in such high regard that they were willing to you know agree with him and participate in excommunicating uh, people who are going against his orders so which is why john says when i come i will call attention to this and i'll let people know what kind of a person he is then the congregation will realize what he is like and they will stop supporting him you know because he is uh, he is presenting himself as somebody that he is not and then the congregation will realize what kind of a person is, he is their eyes will be opened and he will lose the support which he has and he will be brought down to the place you know where he should be rightly put so um that is what john says um now uh, think about it in the earlier letter when john you know said um do not entertain false teachers in your homes he never added the threat and said you know if you entertain false teachers in your home then i will ask, i'll have you excommunicated imagine john himself did not make any threat like that uh, an apostle who was a disciple of jesus even he never made a threat like that and said you know if you entertain false teachers i'll excommunicate you and here is somebody you know who is um, not even as great as john was going around excommunicating people as he wishes it clearly shows that he's abusing his leadership uh, position and so a person like this uh, you know john has uh, says i will put him in his place when i come there i will warn everyone about what he is doing and so he says in verse 11 you know dear friend do not imitate what is evil but what is good so don't you know be like this diotrephes you know uh, don't follow his evil example continue to do what is good uh, because he says uh, anyone who does what is evil has not seen god this man even though he's you know um, presenting himself as somebody very religious and spiritual he has not seen god he does not know the love of god if he did you know he would entertain the missionaries he would not excommunicate people who are showing love towards the missionaries so this is a man who has not seen god is what he says and now he brings up this other issue this third issue which he wants to talk about so he speaks about a person named demetrius and he says demetrius is well spoken of by everyone and even by the truth itself even the truth is speaking well about this man we also speak well of him and you know that our testimony is true uh, so there are three categories of people or things which are testifying to the goodness of this demetrius everyone is saying good things about him the truth you know the very truth uh, jesus and his word they are speaking well about him and john is also speaking well about him uh, which means here is a man who is walking in the truth is committed to the uh, to the you know uh, teachings of jesus and he is following them and practicing them um so maybe uh, you know why is this demetrius being mentioned at the end of the letter probably demetrius is the man through whom this third letter is being you know um sent to the church that is receiving it so um maybe john is telling gaius you know please shelter demetrius is a good man uh, and even the truth itself is uh, you know speaking well of him uh, so you know maybe he's uh, he's saying you know you you need to shelter him and um, you know uh, put him up at your place uh, because everyone is speaking well about him so demetrius is probably the person who carried this third letter and went to that church in which gaius was a 
member. Um, and uh, so with that, he ends this letter. Uh, he says, I have much to write you, but I do not want to do so with pen and ink. You know, he's kind of repeating what he has said in the earlier letter. And then he says, I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Uh, and then he says, the friends here send their greetings. Greet the friends there by name. I mean, the uh, previous letter, it was talking about, you know, um, sisters. If you look at the very end of your, uh, you know, second John, uh, these are the words over there. It says, the children of your chosen sister send you their greetings. Over there, the churches are addressed as sisters. So they're all sister churches, all belonging to the same family. Uh, so one sister church is greeting the other sister church. Here, the church communities are referred to as friends, um, which is actually not a very um, common way of referring to the church. Um, at that time, uh, the term family, sister was more common. Uh, but probably these believers were thinking in terms of John 15, you know, where Jesus says, you're no longer uh, my servants, but now you are my friends. So maybe they, they you know, regarded themselves as friends of Jesus. So maybe that's the reason why, you know, the church community is being referred to as friends. So here um, he says, the friends here greet the friends over there. So one church community is greeting the other church community, and they are referring to themselves as the friends of Jesus. Um, so uh, you know, just to touch upon that uh, verse 12, where it says that even the truth is speaking well of Demetrius. You know, can we say that about ourselves? Uh, Jesus, the truth, and the truth which he proclaims in his teachings. Can they speak well about us? Are we following the truth and living by it to an extent where Jesus himself is impressed and he's speaking well about us? Does he testify and say, yes, this is one person who's really committed to uh, you know, what I have taught, and they are following my teachings, and they are walking in love? Uh, so you know, there, there are many um, interesting compliments which are scattered about in these uh, in in the you know in this letter so can people you know give us such compliments it's a question you know which we would need to ask ourselves even as we uh, you know meditate on this particular letter so uh, this is about it we looked at the gospel of john and now we have looked at all the three letters that john has written um, a lot has been uh, conveyed as information, but information becomes um, reality only when we practice it. Uh, so uh, our goal should be, you know, whenever possible, to meditate upon maybe some chosen passages from these, you know, um, letters and Gospel of John. You know, just meditate on some portions that the Lord has led us to and actively try to implement those in our lives because then you know the beauty of what god wanted to accomplish through those verses becomes a reality in our lives otherwise it just stays as information somewhere in the corner of our head and maybe someday when we have to preach maybe we will you know we'll dig into our notes and take out those notes and preach but there's no real um, joy in that on the other hand when we practice any of these scriptures uh, it literally it literally becomes Jesus living out his life in us, you know, and that kind of um, it adds value to our life, to our existence. So uh, we should never just be hearers, but we should be doers of all that we have heard. You know? So let that be our uh, goal, even as we are ending this entire um, yeah, teaching. So let's just close with a word of prayer. Lord, we're just committing ourselves into your hands. Uh, when John wrote his gospel and when he wrote these three letters, there was so much passion uh, with which he wrote, oh Lord. He, he 
really believed in what he was writing and it was so important to him that whatever he's saying should be imprinted on the hearts of his readers and so oh lord uh, even as we have gone through these things and and uh, had some revelations and learned some new things lord we pray that through your holy spirit you would imprint these things upon our hearts and minds so that lord they will not just be information in our heads but that they will be that they will become things that we actually practice so that you the truth the living word will literally live your your life out in us and christ will start getting formed in us so lord as a result of uh, of that lord we pray that that would happen for every one of us who has attended this course we just commit all of ourselves into your hands so lord uh, bless each student bless them in their lives so lord bless them in their ministry oh lord and also bless them in all of their future studies we commit all of ourselves so lord into your hands thank you lord in jesus name amen amen thank you so amen. much amen you're welcome pastor thank you